Nothing lights a fire for an entrepreneur like difficult times. This is because difficult times bring new challenges, but they also bring new opportunities, and more often than not, in equal measure. In the Crisis Marketing course, I talk about the importance of mindset, and it's important because your mindset determines how you manage challenges, and also how much opportunity you actually see. In this video, I share stories of some of the world's most well-known discoveries that were identified during some of the most difficult times. Where it's important to manage challenges that come with change, it's also important to keep an open mind and to continue to pursue new opportunities. So let's go to the 1930s. The Great Depression hits, it's a really bad time. Unemployment hits 25% in the United States, and there's this guy called Leo. Now Leo's gone from dead-end job to dead-end job, and by the time the Great Depression hits, he's unemployed. But he had this love for tinkering with music and radio equipment. So he had nothing to do while the world was falling apart, so he scraped together some money and started a little business. He realised that musicians were really needed in the Great Depression because they gave people some reprieve from the negativity that was going on. He realised that when people are stuck and they're unemployed, they still want to listen to music. So he started building amplifiers for musicians. A little bit of time goes by and he meets this other guy and they come up with an idea of the electric lap steel guitar. Because Leo loved a guitar and he loved its sound, he decided to put the guitar and the amplifier together and he made the electric guitar. Now this Leo guy's name was Leo Fender and the company he built out of the Great Depression was the Fender Musical Instrument Company with Fender guitars becoming an icon in the music industry. Okay, so what about this one? There's a guy called Isaac who was the son of a farmer and he entered Cambridge University in 1661. Now four years later, the bubonic plague hit and England shuts down and Cambridge University is quarantined. Now, that's a word we're all familiar with at the moment. Now, this forced Isaac to move back to his hometown. While the whole of England was falling apart, Isaac had nothing to do but sit around. And one day he was in the garden and he saw an apple fall from the tree. Now, this made him ponder why apples always fall straight to the ground rather than sideways and upward. And this inspired him to develop the laws of universal gravitation. Now, this Isaac guy, was Isaac Newton, and in 1687, he published his landmark work, Principia, which features his three laws of motion. Then there was the Panic of 1893, which was a serious economic depression. Now, leading up to the depression, there were a series of recessions, and in 1891, Dr. James Naismith was working at the YMCA as a physical education instructor. Now, this was the same year as the Great Train Robbery by Dalton Gang. Now, while Dalton was busy robbing trains, James was putting his time to better use, and he was working on the idea of creating a new game that could be played indoors in the cold winter months to provide athletic distraction to a disruptive group of students. He decided to invent a game of skill, finesse, and accuracy, rather than one that relied purely on strength. He was inspired by a game that he played as a child called Duck on a Rock. Now, this is where players lob a small rock at a duck that's placed on top of a rock in the hope that they can knock it off. Now, using a soccer ball, two peach baskets, 10 feet up in the air, nine players on each team, and a set of 13 basic rules, Dr. Naismith invented the game of basketball during one of the most difficult times in American history. Then there was a panic of 1910 to 1911, where this guy called Jacob dreamed up the idea of an electric razor because he was sick and tired of lathering up freezing cold water to shave. So he sent plans to manufacturers who immediately rejected the idea. Now all plans for the razor went on hold when Jacob returned to active duty during World War I. And it was during the war that he got inspired about weaponry that used the design of repeating firearms and thought he could use the same idea to make razors with replaceable blades. Now this guy Jacob was Jacob Schick, and you probably know that his style of razor took off. But Jacob couldn't get the idea of the electric razor out of his head, so he went back to working on the original idea of the electric razor. Now Schick started his own electric razor factory and churned out various models. He filed for his original patent in 1930 during the Great Depression, and the rest is history. Now here's another one. In 1930, during the Great Depression, Paul and Joseph Galvin invented the car radio. Now legend has it, the young brothers were on a double date and one of the ladies wanted to listen to music while they were sitting in the car up at the lookout. The brothers thought it was a great idea and went to work to create it. They wanted a catchy name for their invention and they went to market calling it the Motorola. As you can guess, the name stuck, and three years later, right in the middle of the Great Depression, they cut a deal with Ford, and soon Ford was putting their devices in all of their cars. Now next came deals with the police and fire departments. The Motorola was quickly making the Galvin brothers rich and famous during one of the toughest times in history. 
There are so many success stories that come out of the most difficult times in history, and I have no doubt the challenges we face in 2020 and beyond will be a catalyst for an enormous amount of innovation. Some at the macro level that will change the way we all live our lives, and some at the micro level that will just change the way that we operate our businesses. The important thing is to not let challenges consume you, but to manage the challenges and to constantly seek new opportunities.